Excerpts from the Game of Life by Florence Schofield Shin. Most people consider life a battle, but it is not a battle. It is a game. It is a game, however, which cannot be played successfully without the knowledge of spiritual law. And Old and the New Testaments give the rules of the game with wonderful clearness. Jesus Christ taught that it is a great game of giving and receiving. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. This means that whatever a man sends out in word or deed will return to him. What he gives, he will receive. We are taught also that the imagining faculty plays a leading part in the game of life. Keep thy heart or imagination with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Proverbs 4, 23. This means that what man imagines, sooner or later, externalize in his affairs. So we see, to play successfully the game of life, we must train the imagining faculty. A person with an imagining faculty trained to imagine only good brings into his life every righteous desire of his heart, which is health, wealth, love, friends, perfect self-expression, and his highest ideas. The imagination has been called the scissors of the mind, and it is ever cutting day by day the pictures man sees there, and sooner or later he meets his own creations in the outer world. To train the imagination successfully, man must understand the workings of his mind. The Greeks say, know thyself. There are three departments of the mind, the subconscious, the conscious, and the superconscious. The superconscious is simply power without direction. It is like steam or electricity, and it does what it is directed to do. It has no power of induction. Whatever man feels deeply or imagines clearly is impressed upon the subconscious mind and carried out in minute detail. The conscious mind has been called mortal or carnal mind. It is the human mind and sees life as it appears to be. And it impresses the subconscious mind. The superconscious mind is the mind of God within each human being and is the realm of perfect ideas. In it is the perfect pattern spoken by Plato, the divine design, for there is a divine design for each person. There is a place that you are to fill, and no one else can fill. Something you are to do, which no one else can do. There is a perfect picture of this in the superconscious mind. It usually flashes across the conscious as an unattainable idea. Something that seems too good to be true. But in reality, it is man's true destiny or destination flashed to him from the infinite intelligence within himself. But many people, however, are in ignorance of their true destinies and are striving for things and situations that do not belong to them. And this only brings failure 
and dissatisfaction if obtained. Jesus Christ said, Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. And he said the kingdom was within men. The kingdom is the realm of right ideas or the divine pattern. Jesus Christ taught that man's words played a leading part in the game of life. By your words ye are justified, and by your words ye are condemned. Many people have brought disaster into their lives through idle words. Fortunately, the law works both ways, and a situation of lack may be changed to one of plenty. For an example, a woman came to me one hot summer's day for a treatment for prosperity. She was worn out, dejected and discouraged. She said she, she possessed just eight dollars in the world. I said, good, we are blessed the eight dollars and multiply them as Jesus Christ multiplied the loaves and the fishes. For he taught that every man had the power to bless and to multiply, to heal and to prosper. She said, what shall I do next? I replied, follow your intuition. The woman replied, I don't know. I seem to have a hunch to go home. I have just enough money for the car fare. I replied, then go home, never violate a hunch. I spoke the following words for her. Infinite spirit, open the way for great abundance for this woman. She is an irresistible magnet for all that belongs to her by divine right. I told her to repeat it continuously also. She left for home immediately. In calling on a woman, uh, on calling on this woman one day, she linked up with an old friend of her family. Through this friend, she received a thousand dollars in a most miraculously way. She had said to me often, tell people about the woman who came to you with eight dollars and a hunch. There is always plenty on man's pathway, but it can only be brought into manifestation through desire, faith, or the spoken word. Jesus Christ brought out clearly that man must make the first move. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock and the doors shall be open. Matthew 7, 7. In the scripture we read, concerning the works of my hands, command ye me. Infinite intelligence, God, is ever ready to carry out man's smallest or greatest demands. Every desire, uttered or unexpressed, is a demand. We are often startled by having a wish suddenly fulfilled. Nothing stands between man and his highest ideas and to every desire of his heart but doubt and fear. When man can wish without worry, every desire will be instantly fulfilled. The object of the game of life is to see clearly one's good and to abbreviate all mental pictures of evil. This must be done by impressing the subconscious mind with the realization of good. A very brilliant man who has obtained great success in life told me he had suddenly erased all fear from his subconscious mind by reading a sign which hung in a room. 
he saw printed in large letters this statement. Why worry? It probably would never happen. These words were stamped upon his subconscious mind. And he has now a firm conviction that only good can come into his life. Therefore, only good can manifest. Man has ever a silent listener at his side. It is his subconscious mind. Every thought, every word is impressed upon it and carry out in amazing detail. It is like a singer making a record. Every note and tune of the singer's voice is registered. So let us break all of the old bad habits recordings of our subconscious mind and the records of our lives which we do not wish to keep and make new beautiful ones. Speak these words aloud with power and conviction. I now smash and demolish by my spoken word, every untrue record in my subconscious mind. I shall return to the dust heap of their native nothingness, for they came from my own vain imaginings. I now make my perfect record through the Christ within, the records of health, wealth, love, and perfect self-expression. This is the square of life, the game completed. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18.21 Any man who does not know the power of the word is behind the times.